Ecclesiastes 5.15 And he came forth from his mother's womb, naked, and shall, shall he return to the earth and go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor which he may carry away. All the treasures we lay up in this earth will go away. All the riches, all the power, all the things we develop will go away when we die. But the things we put in Christ become our heavenly rewards and will last forever. Second Corinthians one twelve through twenty two. For our rejoicing in this the testimony of our conscience co coincidence conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have our conversation to, in the world more abundantly to your reward. You know, God gives us opportunity. God gives us words. God gives us wisdom to follow Him, to speak Him, to bring Him to others, to live for Him. We have this opportunity through grace. Gives our life more abundant, a purpose. Something we should rejoice over. These Christians should have a story of how they came to the Lord and how the Lord used them. A story or a testimony. Through this testimony, we draw closer to God and gain a wisdom and better understanding of Him to share with others more of Him. Verse 13, For we write not, we write no other thing to you, that what you read or acknowledge, and I trust you shall acknowledge even to the end. You know, the word is important. You know, if a Christian brother or sister shares us some advice, we should take it to counsel, but it should never go against the word. We should always try to listen, but the Word comes first. If what they say contradicts the Word or what God has spoken to us, then we should acknowledge it, but not follow it. And the most important thing is God's will and God's Word. Sometimes God's will for us will be revealed through the words of others. And those that are truly called for God and giving us advice, we'll be like, well, this is my opinion, but you need to pray on it. Verse 14. And as also you have acknowledged us in part, that we are your rejoicing, even as you also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. You know, we need to keep rejoicing. We need to keep praising. Because God keeps giving us another day to serve Him. Another day to live. One day we will be living a life with Him that doesn't end. But our rejoicing shouldn't start then. It should start when we first meet Christ. When He first comes into our lives. We should be able to give him praise that he deserves. Verse 15. And in this confidence I will, was minded to come to you before that you might have a second benefit. You know, it was always a benefit to people when Paul came. It was all, it's a benefit to others when we do what God has led us to do. It's a benefit to us, but oftentimes it helps others and ways we may not know and ways we yet to understand. Verse 16, And it came to pass by you in Macedonia and to come again out of Macedonia to you and of you to be brought on my way to Judea. So Paul's going to try to come to them again. Now Paul also knows this is if the Lord wills it. 
Paul wants to do this, but Paul also knows the greater want is to serve the will of the Lord. He isn't called necessarily to go to Corinth. He's called to do God's work. Hope, he's just hoping God allows him to go through Corinth. Corinth, you know, God puts it on our hearts to do certain things. We put it on our hearts to do certain things for the Lord. But ultimately, we just need to do what He needs to do. Yeah, they may have been, it would have been good if Paul was able to come with Corinth. But if it wasn't the Lord's will, Paul didn't need to go to Corinth yet. Verse 17. When I therefore was thus minded, did I use likeness? Or the things that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh? That with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay. You know, Jesus said that we should not make oaths, but let our yes be yes and our no be no. Anything more is of him. And that's kind of what Paul's saying here. He's not saying he's going to make an oath. But if he says he's going to go, he's going to make the best effort to go. But as God is true, our word towards you was not yea and nay. You know, let's share God's word. It isn't a yes, it isn't a no, it's God's word. And what he's telling him is, is it up to me whether we come see you? It's up to the Lord. So we're not going to give you a yes or a no. But we would like to. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was preached among you by us, even by me, and Salvanius and Timothy, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. See, the Lord approved it. The Lord approves and said yay. So they were able to go preach the word with them because the Lord willed it. Paul knew that it was the Lord's will. Paul was not willing to stand in the way but to encourage and help accomplish the Lord's will. For And we should do the same. For all the promises of God in him are yea. And in him, amen, to the glory of God by us. God is never a no. What it is, is God has alternative, which is better. Because God's will is always better than what we have. He may tell us no, because it's something better. As long as we're following Him, we're drawing closer to Him, which is always better. Now He which establishes us with you in Christ, has anointed us, is God who has sealed us and given us earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. You know, the Lord gives us the Holy Spirit. The Lord appoints us. He calls us to do something for Him. Many of us aren't willing to accept that call because we're not looking to Him. Many of us don't know that call because we're not looking to Him. But He gives us that call. We need to be willing to follow Him, to do His will, for us because that's ultimately where the yay is in him serving him making him proud 